What's up guys, DCRC back here with another video. Today I'm gonna be doing a video for WRC Racing on all the tips and tricks I do when I build up my SBX2. So here it is, here is my SBX2. I'm gonna try to do this video in one take, so I got my notepad beside me. I got 11 tips that I thought of just now. Uh, let's see if we can do this under five minutes. So step number one with camber links. So the rear camber links on both sides and then the steering links. Um, these balls are a little bit tight going on or into the plastic. So what you wanna do is to get them loose like this to where they fall on their own and they're all nice and loose, is you're gonna pop that ball in and out four to five times. So pop it in, pop it out, pop it in, pop it out. And there's a, uh, there's a, there's a thin side or a small circle side and a big circle side, and you'll be able to look at it and see which one's what. And pop it in both sides, the smaller circle and the bigger circle. Pop it in and out, get that thing free moving. So if your car doesn't have these free moving, uh, especially the rear end, the rear end's gonna bind up and your suspension's just not gonna work well. And you're gonna have basically what feels like no grip. You're gonna be driving on an ice skating rink. I've seen a driver do this. We caught it, he fixed it. Next time out, it was a whole different car. It was, it was crazy. Uh, next thing, pillow balls. So, we run the steel pillow balls, Chris Morant and I do, over here in the United, in the United States. Um, so you're seeing the two steel pillow balls here. The kit, I think, comes with two steel and two aluminum that you're supposed to run an aluminum up top. But anyways, we glue in our pillow ball into the lower arm. So I just went to Walmart, I think it was, and picked up some Loctite super glue. And you put just a drop on the uh, very end of the threads of the pillow ball, run it in with a drill, get it ridiculously tight. I can't imagine you could strip this out. Just get it tight, and that glue will keep that pillow ball in. I've seen pillow balls on all sorts of different pillow ball cars of the lower ones backing out over time. Say you're in a 30 minute long race, you can't maintain your car in the middle of the race, right? So you need to make sure that is stuck in there. Uh, I've never had a problem with the top ones. Uh, probably wouldn't hurt to do the top ones, but I've never done it to the top and I've never had a problem. So that's that. Uh, sway bars. So with the sway bars on this car, they're not bent enough stock. So when you look at the car, when you're building it, you want to have your arms flat on the table, just like this, flat on the table. And when you put the, the uh, sway bar on, it's going to be angled at about right there. So what you're going to need to do is take some pliers, hold it right here and right here, and bend it more so that this mount right here is perfectly straight up and down when you're looking at it like this. So you just want to make this bend here and here a little bit more. So that, that, so that that doesn't bind when the suspension goes up. So as you can see, if, it, if this was laying over a lot more to the right, it would be binding up. So that's that. Let's see. Oh, also about on the sway bar. Chris Morant showed me a good tip to get this link straight up and down. You need to either Dremel four millimeters off the end of the sway bar, or you can just have four millimeters sticking out the back here. So all of the sway bar through this little silver bowl. So either way, I, dr I just dremeled it down. So now I just have it flat on the back. As you can see, it's just flat in there. Um, that way I don't have to eyeball it every time. Uh, let's see, next thing, next thing. Dremel the rear bulkhead. So on this shock tower nowadays, there's a fourth hole drilled out underneath where I have my camber link mounted. As you can see, I'm in the third from the top. There's a fourth hole on the inside position. If you run that fourth hole, you need to Dremel down the bulkhead right in here because the camber link will rub the bulkhead where the shock tower screw mount is. Now I have mine Dremeled, so you might be able to see it in there. Let's see. You might be able to see that a little bit. It's a little scuffed up. That's from it being dremeled. I don't run that position though. I like to run the third hole down, but I know a lot of people like to run that fourth hole down. 
So if you're gonna run the fourth hole, make sure that's dremeled so that uh, this can be very free. Next thing, uh, shot caps. So on the shot caps here, as you can see, there is no, this is the, uh, this is the emulsion cap, but there's no screw in it. So what we do is we run the bladder, the yellow bladder, the super soft bladder, and run no screw in it. So this basically gives the feel of an emulsion shot cap, uh, just because the, uh, the bladder with no hole, there's no pressure up here. It's super, super soft. So it gives the feel of an emulsion, but it's super consistent because as the race goes on and it builds pressure in the shock, that cap can swell up and relieve some pressure inside the body. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, as you can see on the back shock cap, I have this little bushing in here with the thick part towards the shock tower. On the front guy, we have the bushing, the thick part on the front, away from the shock tower. Gets the sh angle of the shock more flat with the car or more straight and parallel with the car. It makes the front shocks not bind so bad or makes them not bind at all. Also with the rear shock caps, if you're gonna run this plus five millimeter shock standoff, you need to Dremel out, or I just use an X-Acto knife, a really sharp brand new X-Acto knife, and I made this hole bigger on both sides. So I have both of uh, a one that's not Dremeled out and one that is side by side, as you can see. The one on the right is the rear, the one on the left is the front. You don't need to do it on the front as I'm not running the plus five on the front. And then that's it on the other side. Basically, what, the reason why we do this is because this makes the angle of the shock uh, much more leaned back and it binds it up if you don't dremel that. Again, that's that will make your car feel absolutely broken if that's not dremeled or, or milled out with an X-Acto knife. So you want this to be free. As you can see, mine's very free. Uh, tip number, I think it's six. Oh, the top plate. I've seen a lot of people, and I did it myself too, this carbon fiber top plate here, this aluminum piece down here is built into the top plate. Once you get it, when you get it with the kit, that aluminum piece is in there. You wanna have the aluminum piece uh, sticking down towards the steering rack. I accidentally did it wrong and I had the aluminum sticking up. It looks like it might go up because the, the, the screw would just fit perfectly in that aluminum piece, but that's wrong. You wanna have that down. That takes play out of your steering rack. So there's no play up and down, basically no play up and down. Uh, the hexes. I only had to do this in the rear hex, not in the front, but there's a little shoulder piece or top hat piece that sticks out on the back side of the hex. You can't see it right now, but I ended up having to dremel that back just a little bit because when you put the pin in and set this set screw very tight, it would bind up the bearing. So you want to dremel that little shoulder off the back just a little bit and that way it doesn't bind up and I even have a little bit of play in here. And that's so the bearing doesn't bind up when I tighten the screw down. So you're not getting any drag on the drivetrain right there. Uh, next thing, let's see, rear hub spacing. So this is one thing, the kit tells you to put too many spacers in here. I don't remember how much it is, but basically Chris Morant told me a good tip. You have two, two millimeters up here, and then you fill in the rest with however much you need, but keeping it free moving. So. If I'm to prop this up, if I prop this up, it still has a little bit of slop and it's still free moving. Everything's free in there, um, but uh, there's not crazy amount of slop and it's also not binding. So on this side, I have a couple washers. I don't remember what sizing. I just did it to where it filled in the space. The other side, I ended up having to use another little bitty washer uh, to fill in the space as the other side was a little bit more uh, slopped out but doesn't matter just make sure there's two millimeters up front and fill in the back and the kit comes with these washers so you don't have to worry about buying any i, I use the ones from the kit on that uh, next thing dremel the steering post so on the nitro car only as you might be able to see in there my steering post and tank are dremeled out a little bit Let's see if i turn the steering post we'll be able to see this a little bit better so the reason I did that is the, the tank is so close to the steering post, um, 
it, it, they would hit on a harsh front impact. As you can see, there's a little bit of like a light white spot. That happened before I dremeled all this. Um, there was a running change though that they moved the steering, or sorry, the tank back, I think two millimeters. So if you get a kit from about the time this video comes out and into the future, you shouldn't have to worry about that. But if you have a kit from before this video comes out, um, you need to dremel that down to give yourself a little more room. I also dremeled down the chassis underneath the tank. You'll be able to see if you run the car, there's a little spot on the, on the chassis that it, it, it hits the chassis. Uh, sorry, the tank hits the chassis. You can dremel that down. Um, they did revive the chassis. Again, when they moved the tank back, they also dremeled down the chassis there, or not dremeled down, they, they notched out the chassis there, so that's not a worry. What you can also do is just put a 1.5 millimeter spacer underneath this screw uh, on top of the post. Uh, if you do that though, you need to make sure that you don't over tighten that screw. But again, if you buy a kit after this video comes out, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, next thing, brake pads. So on the brake pads, you'll be able to see in here, I have cut my brake pads down inside there so that the springs can go on. I don't remember what company springs these are. There's a few companies that sell springs and I don't think they're necessarily needed, but if you use springs, use very, very soft springs. Um, after you cut that down though, now the screws can't hold the pads down and you need to glue the pads onto the calipers. So again, use your super glue and lather on some glue on the backside and just press it with your fingers for maybe 10 seconds and then keep building your kit. Next thing is side guards. As you can see, mine are cut. This is not necessary. Uh, Chris Brandt feels that this helps with uh, flex a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's fully necessary. Um, like I don't have it done on my electric car, but that is something you can do. Also, it you know, gives a little bit of a different look and also you can, you can hold your car a little bit easier from the underside. That's the only advantage I really feel, honestly. <laughs> but I haven't tried it on this car without them being cut. I've only tried them with being cut. Well, that's it. Hope this video helped y'all build your SBX-8. Um, with those tips, I'm very confident you're gonna have an easy to drive car on the track. The biggest tip that I would say, make sure you do if you're in a rush, say building this kit or something, if you're using these standoffs, make sure those those bushings are are reamed out and free moving make sure your camber links are free if they aren't free your car is going to feel absolutely broken make sure your hub spacing is proper make sure there's a little bit of play in there and everything's free in there um but yeah all the other tips are just little trinkets but those those are the big ones but uh, hope this video helped y'all we'll catch y'all next time